Okay, so today I'm gonna to talk very quickly in this little review of the brand new Honor X8A, a phone that shares a lot of similarities with its predecessor, the Honor X8, but there are one or two differences in this new model. But is it any better than the old model? Let's find out. So the Honor X8A shares the same general design as its predecessor, the Honor X8, with the same all plastic design, flat plastic edges, and that square camera arrangement on the back. Flipping over to the front, you get the same 6.7 inch Full HD display with a 90 Hz refresh rate, which is good for just a shade under 400 pixels per inch. Overall, the display is really nice. It gets bright enough for me outdoors. I do find that color reproduction on a lot of the Honor devices I have used isn't the best and isn't as good in comparison to some Motorola phones and Samsung phones as well. But for general use, it's been absolutely fine. The 90 Hertz refresh rate makes the phone really nice and really responsive to use. And then up in the center, you get the same 16 megapixel F2.5 selfie camera as well. Flipping over to the back and on this particular model is the blue color. And it kind of comes up in a pretty sparkly sort of design when the light hits it right. It is a pretty nice color to be fair and it does a pretty good job at avoiding fingerprints. On the bottom of the phone, you've got your standard microphone, USB-C charging port, which supports 22 and a half watt fast charging and a single firing speaker. On the right of the phone, you've got your power button with integrated fingerprint sensor. This is pretty responsive. It's not the fastest I've used, but it absolutely does the job. And then above that, you've got your volume rockers. On the top of the phone, you've got another microphone and an IR blaster. And on the left, you've got your SIM tray, but there are no provisions to expand the storage by micro SD card. And speaking of storage, the Honor X8A comes in two configurations, both with 128 gigabytes of storage. You get six or eight gigabytes of RAM, whereas on the regular X8, you just had six gigs and 128 gig model. So they've just added that extra couple of gigs of RAM on the other model of the Honor X8A. And then powering the phone is a MediaTek Helio G88 processor built on a pretty old 12 nanometer fabrication. Power wise, it's very similar to the Snapdragon 680 found in the regular X8, but that is built in a much more efficient six nanometer fabrication. So why they chose to go for a Helio G88, maybe it's something to do with the global chip shortage or something like that, or something to keep the cost down a little bit. Don't know, but performance wise, it is very similar to the regular X8. And of course there is no 5G support on the Honor X8A either. So that's just something to bear in mind if you are considering buying this phone. And lastly, if we quickly talk about the camera on the Honor X8A. Now this is an area where personally, I think it's a little bit more of a marketing gimmick with this 100 megapixel main sensor. As photo wise, the quality of the photos is very similar to what I found on the regular X8. In good lighting, they are pretty good photos. There's a good amount of detail, but finer areas such as grass and leaves and things like that can be a little bit lost, even with that higher resolution. Now, of course, the 100 megapixel is a great marketing thing for someone to go out and buy this phone, but it's all down to the size of the sensor. If you've got a really small sensor on the phone and you're whacking 100 megapixels of resolution on that sensor, there's not gonna be a huge amount of space for each of the pixels to be gathering enough light to produce good enough photos. So that's just something to bear in mind. Of course, it pixel bins down to 25 megapixel photos, but overall, I don't think the quality of the photos is that great. Now, taking more close-up shots of things like leaves and flowers and stuff like that, the photos do actually come out pretty good. There is a decent amount of detail. It's just those finer areas in more landscapey kind of shots that I didn't find the camera performed quite as well. Subject separation, natural subject separation from that f1.9 aperture is pretty good as well. And of course, with the help of that depth sensor it does a good job helping separate the subject from the background. This is also the case in portrait mode as well. The shots come out pretty good, but there is that natural sort of skin smoothing that you do find from a lot of other Chinese brands. And then switching to the ultra wide, I didn't have high expectations going into this review for this camera going by what my experience was on the Honor X8 and the X7 as well, which both use that same camera. Photos aren't that detailed. Color science is very similar to the main camera, but of course from that lower resolution and the narrower f2.2 aperture, it's not gonna be as good a quality as the main camera anyway. And I did find that was definitely the case switching to this ultra wide. And the photos from the selfie camera are about the same as what I found on the regular X8. They did come out with a surprising amount of detail more so than what I found on the X7 when I compared the X7 selfie camera to the X8. The X8 was a lot better, and I do find that the X8A is very similar, again, because it uses that same 16 megapixel resolution with the same f2.5 aperture. There's not a huge amount to report on the selfie camera. The Honor X8A it does the job for a budget smartphone. 
But one thing I can say that is absolutely great on the Honor X8A is the battery life. Now you get a larger 4,500 milliamp hour battery than what you found on the Honor X8, which just had a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. And it does get me all day without a problem, no worries. The G88, although built on an older 12 nanometer fabrication, seems to do a good job at sipping power with everyday use, and it does get me through a full day without a problem. Of course, that 22 and a half watt fast charging isn't the quickest on the market, but it seems to be enough to get the phone charged up in a reasonable length of time. And video on the Honor X8A tops out at 1080p at 30 FPS. And unsurprisingly, this is just bog standard budget video recording. Great for your pets or your kids or something like that, but nothing for a major vlogger, of course, but you're not gonna expect that at this price. And here is just a quick sample coming from the 16 megapixel selfie camera. Again, you can't expect too much from such a budget price, but let me know down in the comments what you think of this video and of course from the main camera as well. So that's my quick look at the Honor X8A. Overall, it's a pretty great phone to use, very similar to the Honor X8 from last year. There aren't a huge amount of differences, only really the camera setup and the processor found inside. The display is exactly the same, same resolution, same 90 hertz refresh rate, same 22 and a half watt fast charging in a ever so slightly larger battery. So overall, the Honor X8A is a pretty good phone, but personally, I think there are better options on the market from the likes of Samsung, Oppo, Xiaomi, even Motorola tend to offer better value for money with better performance, better cameras, and higher refresh rate displays even so than the 90 hertz found on the Honor X8A. But of course, let me know down in the comments if you'd buy the Honor X8A and check out the Honor X8A and the Honor X7 reviews that I've also done. And I'll see you there.